John here. Electricians need to know. Today we're talking about ground rods, how to measure ground rods. Now the National Electric Code 253A2 states that if you're using one ground rod, it has to be 25 ohms or less back to the power source. Okay, that being said, we need to measure ground rods and measure grounds uh, using ohms so we can calculate uh, the resistance back to the panel. Really simple and easy way to do that and you do need some equipment. You don't need expensive equipment at all. You don't need a fancy calculator or anything like that. You do need a calculator though because well some of you may not but I do. I need a calculator. Okay so I need a voltmeter. Uh, use my voltmeter. Now this voltmeter has a low Z impedance scale, a low impedance scale so I can use that in place of a wiggy to test for power. Uh, however, I'm an old guy and I've been using Wiggies my whole life. So I test for power with a Wiggy. So I plug in an extension cord somewhere that doesn't have a GFI connected to it. I test it with a, with a power device, a uh, Wiggy, and it gives me 110 volts, 120 volts. So then I test it again with this low Z scale. Okay, just a double test. Then I turn it on voltage and I read 120 volts. Or whatever your voltage is, you're going to read that voltage. So that voltage needs to plug into your calculator. I read my extension cord uh, this morning and uh, 120 volts right on the money. So uh, I have a resistor. Now this is something you may have to buy. Uh, resistors you can use anything. Now this is a 70 ohm resistor. It's a little high. I like to use between 25 and 50 ohms uh, for my first resistance. It's a two resistant method. So the first resistant needs to be between 25 and 50. You can use this 70, but it brings your current down really, really slow, really low, pardon me. So we use a big ohmite. It's a 225 ohm, a 225 watt, uh, 25 ohm resistor. So I put a ground clamp on one end so I can clamp the ground rod and hook it up to power on the other end. Since we used a wiggy, we know what uh, that we do have usable power. Okay, so we plug it into our extension cord. Then we take this neutral. Uh, and we tie it back through the ground clamp. I'm not gonna do it here, but we tie it back through the ground clamp and we test, and that'll complete our circuit of hot, neutral, back through the, and that'll, and we take an amp probe. The amp probe gives us 4.8 amps. Okay, so 4.8 amps. We calculate that 4.8, uh, 120 divided by 4.8, it gives us 25, 25 ohms. So that's the way you calculate your first resistor, 25 ohms. You already knew that though, didn't you? Okay, the second resistor is going to be your ground rod. So we clip it on there, on the ground rod, and we take current reading again. Now we're gonna have more resistance than 25, so it's gonna be somewhat less than 4.8. So we look at it again and since the ground rod I just put in the backyard is only like three feet in, it's going to be a lot of resistance. So we're only going to get around two amps through that through that ground rod back to the panel. Okay, so two amps divided by 120 is 60. So it's going to be 60 ohms of resistance. But that also calculates the 25. So you have to subtract the 25 from the 60 and it gives you 35 ohms. So the ground rod is only sitting 35 ohms. It's not good enough to pass the National Electric Code. So we need to drive it a little deeper. Okay, so that's basically how you test anything. You swimming pool, diving boards, uh, just about everything you want to test, you drag the extension cord around and uh, run them through your little resistor, check the current, of current going back. Now, if that was 4.7, uh, I would say it's pretty much grounded back to the panel. If it's 4.2, 
you got a little resistance there. So you just divide whatever you find in current uh, by the 120 or divide 120 by the current and that'll give you your second ohm resistor or that'll give you your ohm resistance and then you subtract your resistor the one you're using whether it's 70 ohm 50 ohms or this 25 ohms you subtract that and that leaves you with what what your ground rod or your diving board or your handrail uh, the resistance back to the panel so that's pretty simple so we'll go out in the yard and uh, test the ground rod, calculate it, drive it in a little further and test it again and calculate it uh, before we're done. Okay, thanks. Okay, here's our ground rod. We'll plug our resistor in. There's our resistor plugged into power. Alright, we'll hook up a ground rod and we'll measure current. Now we set about 2 amps. Let's see what we do have. We have 2.2 amps. That was pretty close. Of course, I've done this a lot. 2.2 amps. Alright, take that off. We'll plug our 2.2 into our calculator. One twenty divided by two point two gives us fifty four point five four ohms of resistance. Okay, fifty four ohms. So we want to subtract twenty five. We want to subtract our resistor. So we go minus twenty five equals. So we got twenty nine point five ohms of resistance. That's too much. So that means we have to drive this down a little bit more. And I. I said it was down about three feet. It's more like four and a half feet. Okay, so let's drive it down a little bit and measure it again. Okay. Or click our set our amp meter. The amps 3.0. 3.0. All right. We'll put 3.0 in our calculator. One clear. 120 divided by 3.0 equals 40 ohms. Okay, we're going to subtract 25 minus 25 equals 15. So now we have 15 ohms of resistance between here and the panel. That's good. The, the National Electric Code says anything under 25 is good. Okay, so that is a good ground rod, even though it's sticking way up. It's uh, 15 ohms which isn't bad. Let's uh, go a little bit further. It's starting to get hard. So, let's try her again. We didn't get much. 3.1. Clear. 3.1 clear. 120 divided by 3.1. 38.7 minus 25 equals 13.7 ohms. So we're coming down. I must have hit a rock or something, so it's kind of hard. I was hoping I'd go a bit further than that. But 13 ohms isn't bad. Uh, it wouldn't be good for a swimming pool, but because uh, you want it down to about 4.6 amps on a 4.8 amp scale, which would be just this resistor. 
so um, if we went 4.6 that would be 26 amps so you'd only have a 1 ohm of resistance so that, that's pretty good so anyway uh, that's the way you measure ground rods it's simple and easy now you can go to my website shook electric uh, com and I'll have a description of this video on my website. Okay, thanks for watching.